Hello. I wonder if you can relate to my experience. On Sunday, I sing praise to God. I might sing, Thine be the glory, the splendour of the King, how great thou art, over all the earth you reign on high. I hear the words, go in peace to love and serve the Lord, and I respond with a sincere Amen. My focus is on God, my desire is to be obedient to him. I'm encouraged. But by the middle of the week, things can seem different. It feels hard to do what is right or to speak of my faith in Jesus. What seems so doable on Sunday at church seems difficult at work or with friends by Wednesday. At the beginning of Acts 4, Peter and John had been imprisoned and they were released having been cautioned not to speak or teach in the name of Jesus by the authorities. We might not have been imprisoned or received such a clear threat, but there are lots of ways that our culture and society suggest that it is not permissible to talk about Jesus or to behave differently. Even as we want to follow Jesus as Lord and live out his kingdom values, we can feel pressure to conform, to avoid being marked out as different. Maybe it's as simple as wanting to be liked and to avoid the threat of being ostracised. As the authorities tried to exert control over Peter and John, so all kinds of things and people in our lives can exert control over us until we no longer speak about what we have seen and heard of Jesus, our Lord, and his power to save and restore and transform. So it's helpful to look at what Peter and John did in the face of this threat. Firstly, they went and talked to their Christian friends about it. They reported what the authorities said. It seems obvious to do this, but it does require us to make an effort to go beyond, how are you? I'm okay. And be open about where we find living as a Christian difficult. Secondly, they prayed, or in the words of Acts 4 verse 24, they raised their voices together to God. They didn't just talk to each other about it, they talked to God. Again, obvious, but I don't always do it. And as a result, thirdly, the room was shaken. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Which leads us to ask, what did they pray? They began not with the problem or the threat or the authorities, they began by coming to and praising the one who really does have control and authority over all. In verse 24, Sovereign Lord who made heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. They then looked back to their ancestor David, predicting a time when there would be opposition to Jesus. They remembered that it looked like people or authorities were in control as they plotted against Jesus, but reminded themselves that despite this, in Jesus, God was carrying out his plan. Finally, only once they had reorientated themselves and were seeing clearly who was the creator and who the created, who was the Lord and who his servants, did they ask for anything. And amazingly, they didn't ask for the threat to be removed or the authorities annihilated, but they asked God in verse 29 to look at their threats, that is to bear them in mind, to consider them, and having done that, to give them boldness. This boldness was not just a removal of fear, but a boldness that came from speaking God's word and being part of God's plan as he acted to heal and perform signs and wonders. They were not going to be part of the authorities' plan or under their control. They wanted to be part of God's plan and to be his servants. And God answered them by filling them with the Holy Spirit so they could speak the word of God with boldness. It's a pattern I could certainly learn from. 
to talk to others when I struggle to live and speak out my faith, when I let other things influence or control what I do and say, to pray for myself and others in our struggles, to remember who has authority over all the world and is carrying out his plan to restore and renew it, regardless of opposition. To ask for boldness, not as an end in itself, but to be part of God's plan. There are going to be places for all of us where we find it difficult to speak out, where we feel threatened as we live out our faith. And we should remember there are still Christians around the world who are threatened with imprisonment. So let's pray. Sovereign Lord, who made the heaven and the earth, the sea and everything in them, look at the people, the places and the situations where I and others find it difficult to live for you openly, to speak about you, to stand out because of our faith in you. Lord, give us your servants the boldness to speak your word, to be part of your plan. Would you fill us with your Holy Spirit so that in all circumstances, and situations and locations, we can live and work and speak to your praise and glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen.